Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, continuing on this painting. I hope everyone's day was great. Just like <laughs> suddenly was staring at the white paint, being like, "Do I even want this white?" Yes, yes, I do. Uh, that paint is still good from yesterday. Good, right? <laughs> staring at the yellow ochre. Good morning. Good morning. All right, grab the paints from yesterday. Just setting up the palette as you do. Good morning. Um, ooh, that's a little close. This wants to be a little over. Okay, well, I didn't really move it over. <laughs> Uh, I saved the um, cobalt blue from yesterday. I don't think I'm going to need it at all today. Um, I decided I'm going to start with the, the, not the mantle, her dress today. Um, that way, if I don't finish and get to the faces, it won't be as much of a problem. Um, so I'm not going to mix like the facial colors. I'm just going to mix the colors I want for the mantle. So I need the alizarin and I need you some raw umber. Raw umber always comes out so much <laughs> faster than I want it to. Ah. There we go. Is that the only two colors I need? Yeah. For some reason recently I just like can't keep track of how many colors I have on my palette. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> Squish out the alizarin. That was more than likely way too much alizarin. I usually don't end up using very much of it. All right. So for the for the for her dress. Wow. The brain power this morning. Wow. It is at a peak high today. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I'm going to mix simply the ones I did for the other day. Um, so I'm going to grab some Cad Red and Burnt Umber. Um, which is a really lovely like neutral medium tone red. Um, the cad red itself will be a good highlight. Um, cause I can't really add white because if I add white, it's going to be pink and I don't want pink. Um, then I want cad red and ochre. I, what is with me this week in ochre and burnt umber? Raw umber, raw umber, <laughs> raw umber, raw umber and cad red, um, which is a more, it's a darker, version of the one with the burn number, because burn number is very orange, very warm. Um, and I am gonna add, no I'm not. Um, that'll be, this is a bit dull, I don't know if I'm gonna use it, but what I am gonna do is grab some black and alizarin, and that'll be the deepest color that I go. Um, perhaps even a lot of alizarin, more than I normally would for when I'm doing faces. Um, alizarin doesn't mix well with white, so keep it in the shadows. Um, yeah. And then for the highlight, I'm going to do Cad Red with a little bit of Cad Yellow. It'll be kind of on the orange scale, but the yellow is going to lighten it up even a little bit more. And so I can get some really bright highlights. That was not enough Cad Yellow. I just realized I totally could have mixed these up there, but... <laughs> Oh well, it's just four colors. Um, yes. Okay, just looking at the painting today. Having the cad red of her dress will help a lot with when I get back to the hair. Let's touch this. Is it wet still? No, it's actually... Oh, no, it is a little bit wet. Yeah. The whitest parts are definitely still wet. Um, 
So I can't touch those until perhaps tomorrow. Um, looking at the different spots. I'm noticing that there's a lot of white in Jesus's arm up there. And then it's next to all of these browns. It don't look like they have really any white in it. Or very little. Um, but we're not going to worry about skin tone yet. We're going to worry about the dress first. And then from there, it'll be good. So, starting from the shadows and working towards the lights. Yeah, there are some shadows that are as dark as this black in Alizarin. I was mixing it. I I was before I looked up. Um, this will keep the shadows extremely warm to have the alizarin in it um, instead of the cool of the black. Uh, what was I drawing? That's the shadow, right? It's been a while since I transferred. Oh, I kind of want. Okay, I'm going to do this quickly. I really want rounds for when I'm doing this. This is not going to be dark enough. I can already tell that. It's because the alizarin is a, a thinner paint. It's more transparent. That's the better word. Uh, it's much more transparent than almost any of the colors on this palette. So when added to black, it really, it's, it's even more transparent. And black sometimes doesn't want to be that. So I will be adding black on top, maybe a little bit less alizarin, but this will stain it, stain the linen, and create a really good surface. This girl, she's, it's really interesting. It's like the inside of the dress is black, and or the sleeve has like an edge to it. It's kind of fun. some shadows. So this painting has started yesterday, if you didn't weren't here yesterday. Um, and you can see the live stream from this whole first half. Um, on there. It's still on my YouTube channel. And if it does end up going away, it's in... It's simply unlisted and I have a playlist of... of past live streams. I haven't decided how long I'm gonna keep um, the live streams up. Um, just because they're daily and the rest of the content is weekly, it's not monthly, so I don't want to have too many live streams up at the same time. Um, okay, yeah, moving on, moving on. Um, I'm gonna get around. Okay, I'm gonna do a like a blacker version of this on the edge but then I'm not gonna use it right away. Um, I'm gonna just like touch these up with black right now. I was gonna wait. The sketchiness of these brush strokes is really bothering me. It's because the filbert doesn't, um, it works on edge, but then it leaves those scallopy things and then sometimes it touches the paint canvas and sometimes it doesn't. Then again, I'm doing the same thing with the rounds, so I don't even know. <laughs> Just tighten it up a little bit. At the very least, just establish a little bit of paint here for these darks, so as I had the other colors, they don't get as muddled. And I'll be really clear that there is a crease there. It's gonna say a crevice. That is in the earth. Um, and then I want actual black with maybe some uh, raw umber. For this edge. Um, and then it has a little bit of that right under this edge. Huh. 
don't know if I made it dark enough yesterday. Or it just needs to be oiled out. These are two very real questions. Because as the oil paint dries, the oil uh, sinks in um, and disappears a little bit and it becomes much more matte. So that's why you varnish to bring back the the true colors of the paint. Um, so a lot of times, if you're doing a painting that's gonna have a lot of layers, or you just wanna see how it's going if you're doing like a a la prima kind of style, or approach to it, where you're breaking up into different days but you're doing just one section at a time, um, it can be helpful to oil out the previous areas that you've painted. Um, I'm not gonna do it because as I said, the white is still wet. And I can't really be bothered. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> it's not that important, not mission critical. Um, I'm doing some burnt and raw umber together with some cad red. I think I want more of the cad red. Okay, I just kind of mixed the exact same color that was there. <laughs> Oh, uh, what do I feel about this? Oh no, that's actually, that's okay. I was worried it was a little bit too um, dull. Um, and in a lot of ways it probably is compared to what um, William was using. William being the artist. <laughs> um, because red often when you're using oil paints you're never really gonna do it in one go, like I'm doing, um, because it's hard to keep that red pure and vibrant. Okay, I did not do any sort of preparatory transition between this. Hashtag regrets. I should have done like how I did here with the line of the veil. I should have done something here. Because now it's going to be a really distinct transition. Um, but in a, a something like this would be done in a more grisaille, black and white. Not black and white, but a, a sepia tone, monochrome. Any of those kinds of things. Um, and then you would glaze the red on top. Okay, I'm just gonna lay this in. This entire thing is in shadow. I don't know why I'm being so, I'm like avoiding certain areas. Just, just paint it. It just needs a layer. Um. So more likely than not, mine today will end up being more dull than the original, and that's okay. There are a few of these master copies that I've done that I really want to attempt to do as a a true 100% master copy where I actually like sit down and research precisely the methods that the artist used and try to replicate it brush stroke for brush stroke. Um, but that's for another day. Um, where else? This needs to go more towards the light. I'm going to grab... Straight cad red. I'm just gonna mix it in with what I had. Um, and then. Hmm. No, mm, okay. I was like, this is a good color for the brightest parts. No, it's not. It still has the dark in it. Okay, ignore that. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, this is gonna be the almost brightest shadow. Or the brightest shadow and almost as bright as the rest of it. Uh, and I'm laying it in just to figure out, to see visually where some of these more subtle transitions are. And then I'll go in with the brightest. I went back to the filbert um, cause it does push the paint around a little bit easier. Okay, that actually probably wanted to be the darker color. Oh well.
That entire section is darker. I don't know. Why did I stop and not paint that? Um, I'm going to mix these two together. I'm starting to create a gradient of colors. Um, starting first with the sort of big waypoints in the painting and now uh, mixing between the two to get the in-between, well, to get the in-between colors, but uh, it's a useful way to to set up the palette, especially putting them in order like I did. Um, and some artists will immediately like string them out and blend them together. I find more often that it's a easier to just blend as I go, or to mix as I go. Um, I usually get more accurate color choices then. It's just not my mind works, I guess. <laughs> to each his own. Kind of figure out whatever is easy for you and makes sense um, in your own head. And that's going to end up being your style, because that's simply what the style is. It's how you put paint on the canvas. Um, I feel like I'm being pickier than I need to be. I'm going to go more into the, the cat orangey-ish. It's not cat orange. It's distinctly still very red. Um, but that one with the cat yellow. Um, I probably should have switched brushes. But I didn't. I will get a new one, though, for the highlights. I can... Mm, there's some subtle transitions in there, but I think I'm... Mm, okay, now I'm going to do a little bit in here. Give me some of this. I don't want to spend all day on the red. And I don't think I will have to. Um, so I'm just going to plug, chug, plug and chug. Carry on. What is the phrasing that I'm trying to think of? I don't know. <laughs> okay, new brush. Um, grabbing the cad yellow and cad red. Uh, let's go over this first. Oh, that is very bright. Wow, okay. I'm gonna have to find that gray of the veil. I think I still remember what I mixed. <laughs> I have a memory like a sieve. <sighs> it looks like white umber. I think it had the other umber. And black and yellow? Something like that? I'm gonna need to mix more of that color. Um, red, a little bit of yellow. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to grab the rest of the yellow. And I'll just put more out right now. Uh, wait, okay. Oh, that was definitely too much. Oh well, it doesn't dry out very fast. Mix it together. I find mixing, so you're supposed to mix the paints together. Oh, that has red in it. Okay. Um. You're supposed to kind of mix it together because the oil, like I've been saying. Um, but it does help to know what this paint, you know, this particular color feels like straight out of the tube. So you know when it's fresh versus not fresh. Um, and the degree of change between it out of the tube and it sitting out helps a lot to learn when it's time to just sadly say goodbye 
to a pool of paint on the palette because it's just not not wet enough anymore which is one of the harder things about oil paints I guess I don't know I don't know why it's like different from at least for me from like acrylics and stuff because the acrylics will dry out and it's like oh oh well I'm just gonna throw it away it's dry it's, just, it's nothing I can do about it um, but with oils it's like I don't want it to be dry I want to use it and like get my money's worth um but like acrylic is technically the same um really easy to waste acrylic paint maybe because you go through it a little bit faster you don't need as much oil paint when you paint with oils um but I kind of get up in my head and I don't want to let go of the colors that need to be let gone Like I can tell you, if I use this yellow ochre that's on my palette, I'm probably going to be sad. It's not going to stop me from using it. <laughs> but it will probably make me sad. And I definitely will not be able to use it tomorrow. So if I want to use it, I got to use it today. This is a very bright color. I don't know why I'm using it. Yeah, I need to tone this down. Um, yeah, let's add some of the the burnt umber mix. It really dulls it out. But I think that's better. Cat Red's a bit of a... I probably shouldn't say that. It's an orange color, considering I literally added yellow to it to make it more orange. Um, but Cat Red leans more towards the yellow side. Okay. Um, now I'm kind of just mm, covering the whole canvas with oil. Maybe I don't want it to be that red. The secondary orange I did. That's just straight cat orange. That's very orange. I'm going to start to lean out of that. Because I don't like it as much. Covering these two spots, and then I'm gonna grab some rounds and start to blend and match the shape and the precise color. Doop. The cad red also is um, a more opaque color, um, so I'm going to be using it a little bit in the shadows as a as a sort of bounce light opaque color whenever I need it to go a little bit more opaque. Um, you know, I'm going to go back, hold on, to this filbert. Just kind of lay in a few colors. Prepping the transitions, making it a little bit thicker. I always go extra thin on the first pass of my paint, um, so I can adjust it easier. I need to figure, okay, hold on. That line is really bothering me. Um, but now I'm starting to deposit some more paint. Oh, just got, just got paint on the easel. Uh, oh, that's dark. Let's not do that. That over there needs to go darker. Okay, that's going to be too small of transitions over there. I need a smaller brush. 
Um, I'm gonna grab white, black, cad yellow, black and umber. That's the light version. Ooh, that's light. Grab more black, grab more umber, grab more ochre. That's closer. Just laying a little bit of that in. And then I want to go more black, more ochre. That'll be good. This part of the veil is dry. Um, it doesn't have as much white. Just coming in and softening that black transition and providing some paint. So I wanna go in with the reds next to it. Um, I don't have as harsh of a transition. Um, but then I do want to go perhaps a little bit darker. Ooh, the temptation to go down and do another layer on all of this is very strong. to the black brush. Okay, that line is a little off. And this needs to be actually black now, the are in black. dark colors that kind of come together right there, except it's not super dark. Oh boy. I don't know if I want to just, I'm not going to do a whole second layer. No. I added a little bit of white to the brush, or the lighter color that I'd mixed, and now I'm just softening these black edges. Making it look like it belongs. Now I'm stopping. Um, I do want to add these background colors over here are not really dark enough. Um, and add a slight edge here. As I was talking about yesterday, um, William kind of did a lot of it's like vaguely outlined. Um, and every edge kind of has this subtle um, black thing. But it's just, it's a line, essentially. His shapes are very clearly defined. Um, I don't know why I did. Hmm. If I oil that out, that this area would definitely go darker if I oiled it out. Do I want to paint over it or not? I want it to be better, but I also don't want to spend all day on it. Uh, wow, that was a, kind of an interesting combination of colors I just added there. The cat orange made it very yellow ochre-y. Kind of strange. Um, This is the black on my brush, and I'm gonna add some umber to it, because I know it's really red in here. The lizard is fine, but it just needs to go darker. Okay. All right, 
we're gonna do a great technique called glazing, which is one way to glaze. My way of glazing. I actually don't know how to properly glaze. Have not figured that one out. Oh no, I'm picking up some of the canvas. Um. Okay, that's not entirely true. I do know there's like a few different methods of glazing. One of them's adding like oleo gel or something to your paint so that it is just straight up more transparent and then you add it on top. Other ways is just to paint it thinly with the normal paint. That is what I'm doing here. Added some down and now I'm pushing it around. And since it is transparent, I'm picking up some of the paint because it's wet. Uh, since it's transparent, it won't. Be opaque since it's transparent. Okay. Wow, that was a great sentence there. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to add a little bit more detail back on top and fix the parts where I kind of scraped the paint up. Because um, now it just looks kind of fuzzy. Check it's the background, but there was a bit of definition there for a reason. It's fine. Okay. But I do want it to stay kind of defined from this. Alright, regrets might have just been made, but you know, we move on. Okay. I need a round. And I'm going to start with the darks and work towards lights, as I always do, as I sometimes do, <laughs> remembering all the times where I didn't. The darks do tacky up the fastest. The whites remain I nearly gestured and actually put paint on that. Um, the whites take longer to dry. Um, so if I do a thin layer of darks, it gets sticky enough that I can apply another layer more opaquely on top. Quite quickly, actually. Uh, I need to adjust this edge and soften the dark black line. Soften it from the other edge, and I'm softening it from this edge. Um, and that shape's not doing that. So I'm going to move on. Because I need a lighter brush in order to accomplish that. Ooh, that was a lot of paint. This is going to have to go much more opaque, um, just to be able to combat the brightness and the opacity of the cadmium red that I'm going to be putting on the highlights. Um, if this is super transparent, it's going to look really, um, it's going to look lighter than it wants to be. I'm bringing in some lighter colors, like I said about the transparency of Cadmium red, it's opaque. Okay, don't ruin this edge. Uh, what am I? Okay, I need a, I need the light brush. I'm starting to. Adjust it to how I want it to be and not how it actually is. So just mixing all of these colors together. There's not enough paint. Okay. Any more black for cad red. More burnt umber. 
is almost the highlight. It comes out farther and then it turns and then this little guy comes out and up and does a little, little curve over uh, and doesn't do that I need another brush that is gonna be the actual highlight oh I just put my finger in um, which is gonna be a little bit more cad red I think than this pure no other browns in it Popping in there, popping down there, getting rid of that dark. Um, woo, that's a bit too much paint. Okay, move it around, move it around, pick it up, push it around. Uh, there's better transitions in there that I don't have on my brush. Popping down. Popping over. Mm -hmm. I should move back to the other brush because this is supposed to be the brush that has no brown in it. Uh, there's other things going on in there. Let's pop over to the other brush and figure them out. Okay, so this kind of comes over a bit more. This blends there. I said I was going to start in the dark and work my way to the lights, but here we are in the middle of the whites. Lights. Um, medium dark for this one little puckering in as it attaches to the shoulder and the underarm. Grabbing the lighter color, grabbing the lightest color. Um, mostly that transition because there's too much dark there, so I'm trying to. As I apply a medium color, it just doesn't show up. Uh, it needs more blending capacity. So punching up the lightness with the with the really light colors. It just is better. I'm adding a little bit more opacity here. A bit more here. It's got a little dark overall. Grabbing more. Okay, this is doing a weird like thing. <laughs> yes, because that made sense. It's it's too even all the way down. It's going to need to sway in and out and then come to a ball at the point and curve back and not just stop like a line. Does the way I explain shapes even make sense? <laughs> Makes sense to my head. It wants to create a little reverse teardrop and then it goes... This might not even be right, but it is closer to that than what it was before. And then it has a darkness here and a darkness here. And then a medium there. So swap to the medium brush. I have four, four brushes right now of this fabric color. A dark, a medium dark, a medium light, and a light. kind of it's a slight transition of it coming into this crease and then there's one there that that was too low and this yes something like that something like that even out the fact that I put really dark paint there originally provides the perfect base to come in with this medium dark on top Uh, 
I've lost the dramatic shadow. So we're gonna add that back in. Jesus' fingers is casting a dramatic shadow here. Um, so matching them up with the knuckles is important to make it look realistic. Did I succeed? Well, I don't know. we'll see. We'll see. Right, I'm gonna go to the dark because I'm starting to veer towards black. And I don't need that brush to become the black brush. I need it to stay the medium dark brush. <laughs> because hashtag brush management. I was intending to look up more about this painting last night. And then I completely forgot. It would be fantastic if I could have like an intern that would just sit in the background. And when I was like, look something up, they would look it up for me. That'd be quite the boring job. <laughs> so unnecessary. It's like Siri, except just a person. Because I can't read Siri. Siri can't read out loud to me. In a, in a functional way. Um, That needs to blend out a bit more. As it... As it approaches, no, my cat wants to let be let in. <gasps> Leave me be. No, I'm not letting you in. Okay, I have to let her in. <laughs> She's really <laughs> hitting that door. Okay, scoochy, scoochy. Hello, can I help you? Okay, well, she can decide if she comes in or not. Oh, running over. Okay, well, now, now I'm just stuck. Okay. Oh! <laughs> just scared her away. Not all the way away. Okay, well, I'm gonna scoot forward. Are you gonna come by? You're gonna sit. You're gonna try to sit in my lap while I paint, because that's a terrible idea. Alright. Where are my brushes? What was I painting? A uh, medium dark brush. Hello, Kashka. Here. As that piece of fabric turns around the shoulder, it lightens. Very quickly. Put down here is a little bit darker, and then next to that will be um, contrasting with the really bright light. background <laughs> sort of with that light oh there she goes <laughs> cat cam he's just gonna stand there anyway just kind of deleting some of the bad marks and softening things together this needs to go lighter there's also pops out a bit. This edge needs to be soft. And then like that. And it is darker there. And then this light. Oh, oh, I have a cat hair.
She's just gonna stare at me. She's almost with you. Nope, wrong way. Can you, okay, you can't really tell because of the light. She's back. I have an overseer now. She's upset because she can't sit on my lap. Okay, focusing back on the painting. <laughs> no more cat. Um, that was probably too much light. What am I doing here? This edge needs to be softer. That edge needs to be softer. More opaque, this area, whole area is still very translucent. Softening that edge, bringing it down. Okay, that's not, I'm not bringing it down. I'm actually bringing the dark up. Okay, bringing the light down. Why is this so dark? What was I, what, 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 am, what am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, I'll get the medium light, add some more cat red and just obliterate that. Add some there to soften that transition. Okay, that actually is darker. I don't know what I'm doing. on the top needs a bit of a highlight right there and then so I have this whole shape kind of slithers down back. Also this edge is very mm, very soft. There's not a hard edge. It's just simply going over our arm and then leaving the highest part of the sunlight. Swapping back to the medium. hit the point where I don't really know what's happening. It made sense, and now it feels like it doesn't. Now I gotta work our way back to it making sense again. I think it's because the contrast is too strong. Oh. No, see, because that's the color. I was gonna say I want to make some burnt umber and cad red mix, but that's what's on here. And it's throwing me off. I'm just gonna work a little bit of cad red into this area, in this area.
in this area. It wants to be darker there. I'm gonna grab a new brush. I'm kind of happy with the, where those brushes are. Oh, you know what's the problem? That's the raw umber and cad red mix. Oh, I lost my, I've used all of my burnt umber. Cad red. Okay, well that was way too much cad red. Let's just grab the rest of the burnt umber. Okay, yeah, that's a nice darkish red. Well, there she goes. Do I need to work back with the darks? This area is lighter than I'm giving it credit for. What are you doing? She's making noises. Um, do I have I need a red that's gonna transition with that dramatic shadow. Oh, here's a problem with that dramatic shadow. Is it just there? There's not enough variation within it. There is a crease there. And there's also a delicate crease here. And then this crease is more dramatic than I've done. A bit there, a bit here. My brush is too dark to do any of the other ones. light. Okay, let's work down to the sleeve. See if that helps. Give the eyes a bit of a rest on the parts that I've done so far. So I can look at it fresh in a minute. Need more paint. swap to the okay that this one the, the brush that has this one which I don't even know if that's the brush that I picked up it's not dark enough um let's try adding a little bit of the alizarin black mix instead of the burnt number or the raw number light is doing something that's not right. Smooth that transition. I 
Okay, so it comes over. There is a very dark version. Grabbing some alizarin and cad red with the black to make a really dark shadow. That isn't black though, because I need it for right here. Okay, well that was only sort of helpful. But there's there's a lot of paint there already. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go to the black brush. Hmm. And we stare at it. We squint until it tells us what it is doing. Soften that edge, because even though that sleeve is in front and it's pretty sharp, making that edge soft will make it look more realistic. In the future, once I get the rest of the shadows in. I feel like a lot of my shapes right now are very clearly defined. They will be a little less so. While at the same time being more clearly defined. I, did, I, I recognize that that sentence didn't really make much sense, but it did in my head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> depending on the need of the area. This shape is also just not right. In the silence of me trying to figure this out, if you haven't liked the stream, you can just go down and hit that like button. Make sure you check if you're subscribed as well. Really helps out the stream and the channel as a whole. My brush is pretty much always on the move. <laughs> kind of like a lawnmower. <laughs> where it's on and then you push it to where you need it to cut the grass. And then it's just, just going on. 
<laughs> Why was that the metaphor that my brain supplied? Gee whiz. Um... Well, I'm thinking about where I want to be going. It's blending the edge of where I've been. And keeping it fresh. Is it possibly not the best method? Yes. But it works. This needs to go darker. The brush. I guess and the painting. Um. Mm-hmm. By doing light little circles, um, especially with a round brush, I found it really um, deposits the paint lightly and blends it without destroying what's underneath. Which kind of adds a very soft lightening. Or darkening, or whatever it is. Um, and often what I have on my brush is vastly different from the color that um, you see get deposited because it's blending on the canvas. So I'm thinking about that as I'm mixing colors on my palette. That if this is this A, the first color I'm putting down on the canvas there, it needs to look one way. Um, and if I'm trying to adjust a color, it needs to function very differently. Grab the medium brush. Starting to find that I'm blending too much dark into it and I want to push it back. So I'll go the lighter direction into the dark. Bounce light from the veil. Finding this shape right here and somehow scraping all the paint up. What am I doing? That is, that okay, that's too late. What am I doing? Uh this dark crease goes all the way up. I'm just gonna have her back like my bad. Uh curving in. So pushing that back out. Which also is gonna blend with whatever I was doing earlier with <laughs> those mountains. Oh boy. They actually I don't I don't dislike it anymore. Um, I do want the dark color again, and I feel like squ squiggling up, it is much more of a straight line. Of course, I can't paint straight lines. <laughs> there we go. And then this fades to darkness. in here, and then it comes out darker for a little bit longer than what I have. Um, what is that doing? I think it goes kind of dark all the way across. And then there's a little bit of bounce light on this shape. Oh, okay. I 
Okay, this comes to a bit more of a point. And this blends because it's curving over and not coming to a crease. This divots in a little bit more, creating a bit of more of a shadow right here. Perhaps that might be overdefined, and I want to just undo it. Okay, back to the sleeve, finally. Looked away for five seconds, got fresh eyes, and went back to the rest of the painting. And now we're back down here. This needs to go darker to emphasize the difference between the sleeve and the background, but stay soft. Um, I think I want to go in with the lighter colors. This is such a pretty array of colors. Adding some highlights. While maintaining the softness of all the brush strokes. This is just a highly focused day. I'm not talking a lot. I'm sorry. Well, I suppose there's not as much to say. I'm just trying to find the colors. It's just these five colors being mixed in. Not as much as a uh, face has the different transitions. That makes me notice shape more down here. Like I always say, if you have questions, throw them in chat or comments, whether you're live or after the live. Um, because downtimes like this is precisely what would be nice to have a, a question to go off of. I don't know what to say. Uh, what is going on here? Right now mine looks really flat. Let's analyze, why? Precisely. It's because that triangle shape is way too aggressively dark. Can you even see? Yeah, you can see this one. <gasps> Some touch it. Uh, it's too dark, it doesn't turn. We're not turning the shape, we're simply just defining weird shadows. So I'm gonna lighten this top part, darken this part down here, and gradually darken this entire shape as it approaches the bottom. Grab the darker brush. Um, and sort of redefine this triangle. The triangle is dark, 
darkest right there as it turns. And then it's a lighter version of that as it goes up, not the darker version overall as I had originally. <laughs> the internal song is very different from the actual song. Um, getting some more dark on the brush. This shadow shape. What is it doing? What is it doing? Boop, 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 What am I seeing that's different? Going to the lighter brush. This, without the baby Jesus, would probably be the highlight of the, of the dress. It would be the lightest right before it hits the shadow shape. And add just a bit of extra light there, because that's also what it looks like William did. A little bit of light there, uh, and I think that's why. Analyzing why he's doing what he's doing. It's half the point of a master copy. Bum, ba, da, 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 dum, bum, bum. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, what, what am I doing? It seems to be getting darker instead of lighter. I wanted it to go lighter. There's multiple layers of paint there. There's also, I'm missing this like subtle transition down um, of this semi dark light green green oh my goodness <sighs> it's okay wow this is why i've always told myself i can never be an art teacher it's because i just just with full confidence say the wrong color wow <laughs> it's not green, it's red. <laughs> uh, I need some of this darker red down here. <laughs> okay, so as I said, it was going around. I don't know anymore because it is darker here. It's like, oh, shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. All right. Am I ready to move on? No, I should not give up early, this early. Um, I'm having this turn uh, and go around and not be as light as it is. Okay. I 
and now we slow back down. Okay. Okay, looking at the small version that you guys are seeing, doesn't look that far off. Still needs work. But progress has definitively been made. A plus. Um, back onto these highlights. Quite simply, just subtle transitions. Okay, so our half a painting is just putting your brush in the wrong spot and then spending 10 minutes fixing it. Because that's what I just did. And half of getting better is simply just not doing that as often. <laughs> transform this brush into a darker brush. Um, yeah. Peak color mixing right there. It's a bit of a bounce shadow in the midst of that. Bounce highlight. Um, mm, mm, mm. All the way here. Uh, this is too much of a gradual curve. It wants to be a little bit more. you dance with me. Not that you know what that is, because these are artless songs. It's one of the newer ones that I added. Okay, what is going on here? So, dark brush. Let's talk through this. This curves. This puckers. As we discovered yesterday with the veil, William was really good at adding in the puckering of cloth and not just creating smooth shapes because cloth puckers, because it's voluminous. All right. So then this shape is not so soft. It's got doop -de doops in it. And then we got this, which needs to go very dark. So we come into the blacks. And we do this, and, and, and I fail at making that go very black, but okay. And then it kind of comes up, and then it scooches down. And then it connects here, and this kind of splits off into a dual crease. Um, eh, sure. Uh, and then it comes and it goes like that. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. 
before I go into the lights, I'm going to do this shadow first. So this pops down and does an angle, not a curve. And then it goes very angular in a in between. So this goes like boom, boom in a nice little triangle. This is going to cut through that and be the hypotenuse. Okay, this curve need to not forget. All right, then here, grabbing more of the black, this comes almost straight down. I need like a lot more black. And then it angles in like that. And then this side, kind of scooches up through here, but is definitely the part that goes off the edge. They don't V at the bottom, they V in the middle. Then it comes up here and it goes like that. Then this one, last crease, pops that way. Uh, <laughs> okay, this one. Employing straight lines in drawing is an effective technique to produce volume rather than using curves. Not quite sure why that works out so well. It's never been explained to me. Uh, but it does. And I'm s trying it really works. To not use any straight lines while drawing um, or painting. Maybe it's because our eyes perceive it as a curve. And so it looks more realistic. Um, there's a highlight shadow shape. Oh, I want to go back. Okay, let's talk through. Just keep talking through it. Okay. <laughs> I perceive the pain in silence. Uh, light there. This I can't. Okay, this is not a good highlight color. Um, this comes down like that, but it leaves a space for a medium. Let's just simply push this lighter. And down farther. See the little blob there. And then it has here as it comes to the cast shadow. Then it has something here as it comes to cast shadow. Cast shadow is right now way too far forward. This really has very defined, actually, now that I'm at, very much staring at it, wobbles and puckering of the fabric. Very good. All right, and then this is not supposed to be dark, but I didn't have this color on my brush at the time. And it kind of diagonals in a nice little triangle. Uh, then it comes up, and then over, and then down. And comes to a point before the bottom of the page. And this one cuts over, and then down. And then has little bits of highlights down here. And then somehow it's still very wrong. What is wrong with you? Speak to me, painting. What are you doing? You put me 
boo, 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 boo. Oh, I'm just getting dark where I want light. Okay. I need a medium tone brush to bring this all together. Um, um, <laughs> maybe a bit too medium. Laying this one up. <laughs> Why am I looking through my glasses like I have bifocals? <laughs> Why does it help? <laughs> We're genetically predisposed to be like this this look is what makes you see better it induces wisdom and knowledge for i see my grandparents doing it <laughs> okay i'm adding in i don't have like a middle ground color and so I'm simply painting with the highlight and the low light, and it's I'm not getting the transitions that I need. Eh. There is a lot of little transitions in this little sleeve. bit of a highlight there and then this has a cast shadow defining the two areas but this is definitively lighter than the actual shadow but that's okay mm-hmm okay Okay. What is going on there? I feel like my angle is totally and completely off. Okay. Let's try that. Hey? Wait. Okay, no, I was looking at the right spot. Okay. <laughs> Just got a little lost. It's all good, all good, all good. That was not the color I wanted. But it's okay. Improvise, adapt, overcome. So this is nowhere near as smoothly brush stroked as the painting, as the reference. Um, that needs to curve and be a cylinder. So add the half tone. And soften it down there. And give it this cast shadow. See now, okay, now that it's more angled, it doesn't look like it curves enough. Me? Going back to the black. Hmm. Hmm. There is a 
very red spot right here. But it does not interfere with the slightly orange spot up here. Yeah, see how it's in that shape? That shape's like this, not like this. <sighs> Alright. Just tap that out of its misery. to the darker brush as I try to redefine some of these lines. Um, it does the meat need the medium dark? Oh, yeah, no, it did want that. Mm, sort of. There, more. The shadow comes out way too far. But it is still dark, not quite. It's not the highlight part of the shadow. Um, it does want a slight highlight here to define those two shapes. No, I'm gonna leave that. I was gonna soften this edge, but I think right now it's where it wants to be. This, however, needs to be softened. Let's go to the black. That was a bit too much. It does want to be darker down here, I think. Okay. Hey, Am I just not equipped to see where it's wrong? Because it looks right. Oh, no, 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 I'm seeing, I'm seeing things, I'm seeing colors. <laughs> um, okay. Thinking, processing, memorizing. I need to, down here, here, this angle, and that spot. This spot. Uh, this. gone and made this very blah, 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 instead of smooth. Um, uh, that's not, that's not at all what it's doing. I'm just going to get rid of that for a second. Uh, this. What if it did something more like that? Can you even see my hand as I'm painting in this way? I angled it differently. Okay. Okay, this is like a smooth line and it needs to be two separate bits that don't visually connect. Even though they're very close. So one goes like that and then one goes like that. Um, oh, 
Okay, I want to make that the shadow shape a little more pointy. Uh, pfft, not there though. What am I doing? Okay, pull it down and then move it over. Grab the medium. What does that look like? I don't know, it's a bit better. Okay, I'm seeing a few things. One is that the highlight light, which is not this brush, which is this brush, this orange, it's too spotty, it needs to blend out. Um, so I'm transitioning it into the colors around it. Um, and in doing so, I'm noticing that I'm missing a shadow somewhere. This one right here. Not that one. This one. This shape does something more like that and transitions much smoother into this. It's popping out like a sore thumb. Except, except not really, because they're actually very close in color. But it's not helping. Alright, the darkness is the lighter brush, so I'm with a darker brush. The darkness, this is not the right angle. It goes something probably more like that and it comes up higher and that's the darkness I'm speaking of. This is a good thinking song. Don't eat the brushes in case there's paint on them. This has a highlight. Uh, it needs to go farther. This shadow. And then it does almost curve around the edge. As this puckers up into that, it's creating a, a pinch point. Um, and this... Curve is too fat right there. The sleeve is too dark. Yikes. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm gonna deal with that one in a minute. Um, I just want to add this little bit of a uh, pucker. Okay, does it just appear too dark? Because I don't have the lights next to it of like the skin tone, or is it actually too dark? I'm also not in the center of my camera. 
I might be setting up though. Uh, I don't know. When I sit up and look at it, what do I think? Looking at the camera is nice because it's small. So it's like stepping 14 feet back. Um, but I can see with all crispness. Christmas? Christmas. Um, this is the hot time to hold the paintbrush horrendously weirdly. Why am I holding it like this? Oh no, it, it feels right. Um, <laughs> I'm holding it like a pen. Woo! Okay. Um, then I want this little bit of like, a little bit of highlight there. There. Here. And then this is highlight. Oh, no, 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 no. That is a highlight. Don't destroy that. The highlight, however, is too big. So we're gonna take the darker color and we're gonna add this tiny little bloop, bloop, shadow there. Boom. Then the shape has missing an entire cast shadow. Okay, and how does it come? It comes like this. I don't even know what color I want. And then it pops up. And I'm not gonna fix it, fudge the edge with that color. I'm gonna fudge it with the lighter color because then I need to maintain that this is a cast shadow and not just the color of the piece. Whoa, 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 whoa. This one just put me on the cloud and everything just shifted colors in my eyes. Um, this also, it, wait, whoa, what? <laughs> uh, this little spot. This shadow is way too fat. These almost touch. They don't perfectly touch, but they are very, very close. And then this cast shadow is, I don't know why, okay, seriously, why is that shadow so big? Oh, it's because I shifted the edge of the, this edge. And I'm going to slightly shift it back. And then I'm going to make it smaller on this side. Because it definitely is not that big. Okay. Okay, this comes out farther. Okay, what was I saying about angles and not curves? I'm gonna grab the lighter brush, load it up on some light light, and give this a little highlight. There and right there. Um, and then tiniest ones there. And then really I want one over here on this edge. Then here, here, 
here. Okay. Okay, this ship is bigger, so I get a little chaotic when I hit it. But I do want that to be a little bit lighter. Um, and so I don't have as much like variation in shape in this, and I'm, I'm trying to kind of adjust that. Because it is a complicated shape. It's a whole cylinder turning around the arm and the shoulder. I'm gonna go with the medium color. Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, I do want to take that off with this. Normally I would just blend it in, but this is supposed to be very light. Oh, well there's a good amount of paint on that. Ah! Not that dark. higher so this little divot of darker more rich red that I don't have okay is it time to move on if it is I won't be coming back There's still something wrong with this area. Oh, okay, that's the light color. I need uh, darker. Um, this is, I don't know why that's going in and out, but it needs to just be more straight. Then I want to go back to the medium brush. And push that shadow over and then move the highlight in between. Yeah. And then the highlight wants to come here and over. Right? No, that's going to be too far. That is that is most definitely too far. This also comes up. I think it is time to move on though. How do I feel about it in person? Okay, I think I I think I want to move on. Simply for the sake that I will get farther than just simply the dress, because I didn't want to spend the entire day on the dress. So some of these transitions, uh, that was the brush I wanted, um, the kind of blotchy up close. I don't know how much that shows up on the camera, but they're a little blotchy. So I'm just gonna, just gonna do a little bit of do do do. Uh, here as well.
Okay. Uh, and then the red of the book. Okay, and then that needs some black. Oh, that's what I have on that brush. Um, it's outlined in black. And then a little bit like that. And then I need, let's go with this color. It's this one up here from the veil, but I'm gonna make it a little bit more orangey. Like old paper. And like the bounce of white on red. Um, and then grab some more white, some cat yellow, adjust this color a little bit, um, straight white, mm, that's probably going to be a little bit too white. There, dabble just a little bit in to show the pages of the book. And then I need a bright, bright red for the highlight on the red. And then I need the shadow red. Or right by the finger. And then the black as it turns there. Perhaps with a little bit more on this edge. And then it also, uh, I'll use the grayish. The spine of the book is right there. Um, I know because I've seen the whole picture. So this little bit of shadowing makes sense. Uh, and then the page goes up, not down. So adjust that angle a little bit. And then there's a little bit of greenery back there that I've just I lost the last little bit. Okay. Wipe that off. Grab some more white and the yellowish color. And I'm gonna just adjust this a bit because it feels a bit aggressive. Um, okay. Perfecto. All right, I'm gonna do His little shawl of clothing. It's not a shawl. Oh my goodness. Um, it's yeah, whatever. This little thing that he's wearing. trying to also decide if I want to what how how I want to approach this because on one hand it might be better to do all the skin tomorrow but on the other hand I could just start working on one of them today I only have about an hour I didn't know
Uh, that needs to go dark on the inside edge. This is definitely something I should have done yesterday. I totally forgot that he was wearing the sash. I could adjust the hair as well, because it's it was too dark. Because I added too much of the other colors, so I was going to come back today and add the... Well, it kind of glaze over it. Um, going to the medium color, maybe in the lights. What's going on here? Such a small shape. Um struggling even though it's simple and I probably could just stop whenever it's not very important it's gonna fit into the background this cat wow that lighting is, is not good today on this why what is what is with this yeah if I just get rid of the light that works <laughs> well it is what it is I need to be able to see the painting um oh it's better if I, if I rotate a little bit um anyway playing with the cat orange Um, adding some chroma is the goal of today. Okay, hold up. I messed. Whatever I did, I messed this up. It's like that, I think. Uh, not straight red. What am I doing? Definitely red and um, burnt umber. Um, I could just treat this straight up like a glaze. I need a new brush. I want a lighter, yellower version of this, so grab some cad yellow. Maybe just a little bit of ochre, so it's not quite as vibrantly chromatic. Though this is very yellow. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want it that yellow. Adding some white to lower the chromaticness of it. Okay, well, that just went more orange than I wanted. Um. Pretty much. <laughs> Not much to say. Um, this is the brush that I was using as the light of the veil. Which makes sense for here because it's kind of um, bounce lighting onto that. Grabbing a filbert. 
just rubbing it all in. Is that going to accomplish anything near what I want it to do? Not really. Not really at all. I don't have enough, like, little lines in there. Okay, I can either work on that. No, okay, I, I, I would like the hair to look nicer. Let's try to do a little bit more. Okay, so there's a line there and a line there. And then there's a line that comes up here. And that line follows the veil down. And there's a line here that swoops and curves. That kind of comes out and then goes up and then comes back in. Then there's this edge line. There's really only dark right there and not lower. Then it breaks off here and comes up. Okay, well, I didn't have enough paint on my brush there. Do, do, do. It breaks off and comes up. And bees. This is very too dark. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, right here. Mix some of that darkness into this orange. Make a nice little lovely medium dark brown. Okay. And I've lost the dark eye. I needed it one more time. Okay. Um, oh, that was my black brush. Okay, moving back into here with just a little bit of paint. I'm gonna make a dark line right around the edge. And then I'm gonna go back to this color. Now this top part is relatively unlined. It's smooth. Smooth color. But as it comes down, it has some variations of umber. In the darkest part of the hair where it's not getting highlighted, right here, much very umbery. And then coming up. Okay. Then here, the umber, orange umber, continues right here, but it does not go all the way up there because that's lighter. It has this darker part right here, which then transitions up and starts a curve. A curve. And then we go down and get more paint. Then... We bring this down a little bit more. Those are two definitive, like, different, little, different lines. This kind of transitions out. This has a bit more of umber, red, then brown. That is very light. Up here, we have a line that pops off here. And now we transition to a different brush. I want a very orangey light color. right in here for this highlight. Ooh. It's perhaps a bit too light. It is definitely too light. Back to just the umber, or the orange. Okay. The orange. Strategic. Only there, there. And very little here. And here. Delicate touches there and there. Okay. To the red orange as a lighter color, adding bits of highlight here, here, here without being very definitive, very smooth and soft. Then over here. Okay. Back to the darker brush. Filling this in just a little bit. And onto the lighter brush, the lightest brush. A light white yellow. Okay. 
right on this edge where the skin blends in and it's receiving lots of light. And the edge of this orange spike in two lines up this area, leaving a shadow in between. Then in this entire area, with highlights on both sides, but not as much in the middle. Um, how do I want to accomplish that? Coming a little bit brown. Okay, and then up here. And then ever so slightly in here, as I receive softness. Okay, back to the highlight light. It has an edge there and then an edge here. Then it has an edge in here. But laying that angle that I had before, it is not correct. Coming up here towards the edge of the face. And then softly transitioning into very smooth n -n 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 color. Do do do. And kind of blending all the corners and edges together. I've gone done gone too curvy. Is that different from what it was? Yes, actually, I think it really is. Um, hmm. What can I accomplish in 45 minutes? I don't think I can get, actually, both Jesus and Mary's face done in in like one day or rather I probably could but I don't want to rush it so I think I am going to start on Mary's face um, so I'm going to need to mix a few of my skin tone colors um, I kind of already have a umber black mix so I'm just going to grab some of this we're going to make it on this side um, some of the red well actually that was that was definitely orange to make the peachy pink is that even in screen? A little bit. And then here with the pink. Um, and then I want a yellow white. Add just a little bit of cad yellow to white. I'm not going to bother to make the strings of a light and dark. Uh, and then the shadows will be yellow ochre with umber, raw umber. No, they won't. That almost looks like the yellow black mix. Or the, the umber black mix. Um, I'm out of burnt umber. I never make a burnt umber ochre mix. I do today. This also has some cad run in it because that's what was there. Um, wow, there's a lot of cad red on this palette. Where is that coming from? <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, more yellow ochre and then I'm just gonna grab, this is umber and cad red.
All right, new brushes all around. Hopefully I have enough to accomplish something here. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of the green black mix. Oh, you can't see any of that. Green black mix, just abbreviated skin tone colors. Uh, this is a bit dark. So I'll run it along the edge. It's probably too light for this, I need to go. He literally put like a line of black almost. Um, uh, grab some more yellow ochre. Okay, I this is this is a good enough base color. There's gonna be some bounce light that pops in around it, but I think that this will sufficiently shape that shadow, keeping it thin, and then really there's not much shadow on the face. So this is gonna be very interesting. A little bit there. And then I want the black brush. No, I don't because the black brush is no longer black. It has a lot of red in it. New brush. Black. I almost don't want to do it right now. Because I'm going to end up blending it in with too many things. Um, but I do need it here. Okay. Up. Okay. Such a delicate black line around everything. Uh, I am gonna put it in. I'm a little worried that it's gonna get muddy, but I'd rather have it in now than to muddy up the dark later. No, I want this to be a little bit more brown, so I'm gonna add some umber and some ochre. And I'll just take this umber, brown, umber red mix. And mix it in with this, making sort of a three-way transition. No, this feels really large. really really large <laughs> that's okay it's okay it's fine we will adjust as we go there's also like a the where the nose pinches in that is not defined there at all with a line that I think that'll help make it look less weird and large I'm just gonna add the nice little transition that I'll paint into when I get to Jesus's hair. Same with like, you know, hide the veil. Um, and paint a little bit this in here. And right on this edge. Though that actually wants to be very dark. So I'm gonna grab some black. We're not doing the hand. Ooh, blend that, blend that. Uh, I want some of that brown and, you know, just a bit warmer. It's very cool, I feel. Um, There's lots of little lines. I think I might just define the entire eye before I move on. Since it's really just like a ton of little transitions. It doesn't really make sense to kind of get the overall shape and then do the detail since the detail is pretty much the overall shape. You feel? Uh, push the eyebrow in just a little bit. 
Add just a hair of darkness on the edge. Miss a little bit. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I'm going to grab the light brush, which was the highlight I was using in the hair. I think that is pretty close to the white of the eye, or at least is the shadow shape. That'll transition and make it look a little bit more round, even in that small little area. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Add it right on the um, tear line, where the tears come. Um, the eyelashes are just like, they're so long in this painting. I do, okay, it's very strange. <laughs> um, um, do I want it to be this color? No, I want it to be a peachy, a peachy pink white. I don't have that color, so I'm just gonna add white there. I think this is gonna be my highlight skin tone color. Looks pretty good. Um, this will definitely fix the hairline, which is kind of why I decided to do Mary's face today. It's because this hairline, I want to be able to blend into it, and make it really soft, and I can only do that when it's wet. Okay, yeah, that highlight goes all the way down. Ooh. That's his, like, light edge. Uh, it's a bit thick, but I'm not going to worry about it for the minute. Hmm. This does feel a little bit too light. So I'm not going to paint everywhere where I really want to be. So I'm going to do this edge. And this front of the cheek line. Oh, that was a little bit too big. Oh well. Um, this color is rapidly running out of space that I need it. So I'm just gonna blend in a little bit more and then grab some more of the PG pink. In the highlights, I'm not seeing as much ochre, these like neutral colors. So for the minute, I'm just going to stick with my warm peachy pinky colors. And then I might work in a bit of the ochre later. That is just not at all what that color wants to be. <gasps> ah! Okay, this is very pink. There we go. That works better here. This is a darker shadow, but it wants a little bit of pink. This whole area could do with this color. Um, shifting a bit more towards the pink. That might have been a bit too far. We'll see. to get that color out of there. Um, solidly peachy pink yellow. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more of it down here. Um, veering a little bit more to the 
Peach Pink again. It really shouldn't be that pink. It's just a subtle shift. Um, but then there's a... I need to get that color back. I'm not blending into it. dark shadow there under where the collarbone is. Um, I want to find, I'm going to grab a new brush and I'm going to find the color that's sort of that cool shadow, which I do believe is this black umber mix with perhaps a bit of white to make more paint. How do I feel about that? Okay, yeah, that's not bad. Um, and then using that in the shadows. Uh, it's a bit dark. I'm gonna lighten it up. Kinda just wants to be a color shift rather than a value shift. to be just a little bit warmer so I'm gonna grab this neutral um, warm brown oops uh, it's not really color there that's not really there either um, if I shift warm a little bit more brown I can do this cheekbone line and this isn't a bad color to blend into for this edge of the veil and down here but that does want to be a little bit more of the neutral cool color as it receives bounce light from the veil itself and just turns in space and is cooler. Um, and then it wants to shift much warmer as it hits the shadow, the proper shadow, not just kind of in the shadows. Mm. The transition's a little bit too abrupt. I'm gonna go back to the peachy pink skin tone color that I've mixed. I'm going to blend it in and get rid of that harsh transition. Because the only transition where it gets really rough is down here. This entire area is just a little bit more in shadow than I've done. Um, and then I want to get... I don't even know. I guess it's the. I guess it is the same shadowy gray brown color. Ooh! Oh, the sky is still wet. Hello. Put that right there on the edge. Um. Start to blend a little bit of the lights into the shadow, give it some bounce light. Um, but I'm going to stop doing that for a second to do the nostril. swap to the shadowy skin which is peachy pink plus the neutral just a slightly darker version of it for the rest of these away from the light source spots on the face 
and then I need to transition to the lighter brush. And make a lighter mm, version of that. Nope, that's too light. Something right in between that I can pretty much cover the rest of the face with. That's, that's not even, that's what, what am I doing? That's not even close to the color I wanted. And yet I put it on the canvas. All right, just kind of a an, an, an in between color. Um, this is where I'm gonna pause. Well, I'm gonna do the lips first, I think, um, because they're kind of the reds of the of her dress, at least right under here. And then to here with the the warm. Well, that's like literally the same color. Um this color using that color oh man you can't see it sorry um and then lighten that even more let me take just some of the pink the pink color this one they really aren't that red but I'm gonna at least start here and then I'll work my way away from that. Um, I'm gonna take the clean brush and blend all these, pat them together. Make sure the whole canvas is completely covered with a thin layer of paint. Especially this edge, I wanna make smooth. Tapping, I find, works much better in the lighter areas of the skin tone. Like, in lighter areas of the painting and therefore the skin on a Caucasian. Um, because of how the white is a little bit tacky no matter what. Um, it's easier to, to blend for the beginning. LOL, that looks really weird without the rest of Jesus' hair in there. <laughs> Um, so that's the base colors. Now I want to go in and define all of the other colors. Um, my brushes are a little bit dirty. Um, starting with a peachy pink, I want it to be lighter. A lot of really small transitions. We'll see if I can grab them all. I'm gonna add in a little bit of the, the warm brown. Maybe bring it in up here a little bit. Strategy. That's the highest point of chroma, and then from there it needs to go away. Let's still say relatively light. I am picking up paint, but not actually picking it up. Come on. Ba -ba. 
that. Okay, so I've made that a lot more pink. The shadow I'm gonna make a little bit more pink. And then up here, I'm just gonna lightly lay in a little bit of the color that's left on my brush. I don't want it to be too pink, I want the forehead to stay kind of yellow. This goes down farther, and then there's a two prong and a little double thing as that bottom lower portion of the lower lip is in shadow. Um, I'm gonna grab the other brush and go more towards the neutrals. So using that yellow ochre and black mix with the white. I'm gonna keep that transition really subtle, which is gonna look very strange. Adding it there, like I was saying, with the it's in shadow portion. The turned down side of the nose, and then the parts that are pointing away from the sun on the ball of the nose, eye and eye. I've done gone up a little too far, but that's okay for now. Placing waypoints, I will then go back to and redefine. Finding the um, collarbone, get rid of those that harsh transition of that stroke. Cry about the paint being sticky because this is the white from yesterday, but I'm determined to use it <laughs> and get my money's worth. That'll be okay. It's not super bad. Oh, it is. It is a tad sticky. In some ways, though, it's it's good practice because um, well, I haven't used it in a while, but lead white is what the old masters would have used instead of titanium white. Um, and lead white functions very differently than titanium white. And it's much stickier and stringy. And that's just how it how it is. And it is extremely weird to use. Um, and this, But this feels a bit like a practice of it, even though I'm not using it, to use a little bit of older titanium white paint. Um, really get that eyelash out. And then the highlight is contrasted by a nice little bit of shadow there. I'm gonna add a bit of the, like the brown, warm brown. This is gonna be way too dark. Yeah. I'll use it down here. Um, one day I will switch to the lead white and I'll let you guys know when I do. Right now I'm trying to get rid of the, the last of my titanium white. Um, I think I'm going to go in and add a little bit more, um, just surface area of this, the brown of his hair. Though it does transition into lighter colors almost immediately. I'm 
though it's still dark. Um, grabbing just yellow ochre to lighten it without using white. I'm making sure I'm knocking down all the brush strokes here so that when I work into it tomorrow, I'm not competing with what I did yesterday or today, whatever. Um, I could almost just actually paint this. Uh, this shape is wrong. that might be too far might have been wrong and the other shapes are wrong yeah the lower lip isn't protruding enough oh my but that might be too far oh my goodness um And then I want to go in and make a really dark edge. Um, that cuts more like that. Uh, wipe that a little bit, just so I can blend the hair then down. Getting rid of the harshness of the line, but leaving the fact that it's, you know, there. Um, same with here. I've lost that lip shape and it looks really silly. Really, really silly. Side lips are frustrating, but that's why you practice them. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that was way too fat of a line. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this is just a really nice kind of brown to accent right there. As I let my brain think about what I've done and whether or not I like it. I don't know what's going on here. Why is that? Why, why is it done that? And then it has an edge because it has a bounce light. That was kind of a rough transition in that song. Okay, that is not so thick of a line. Um, switching back to the skin tone color. Um, this highlight comes out way too far. Mm, mm. 
I feel like this dark line under there is a bit too dark. Oh, that goes back too far for sure. Let's recover. This mm, doesn't really come down that low, but I didn't like how high the dark went, so sort of splitting the difference. This is too much like makeup. What have I done? We gotta find all of the gradual transitions that are minuscule, define them, get rid of the ones that are too large, and then it'll look more like a person and less like a sixth grade drawing. One thing that consistently blows my mind is how many small transitions there are in a face. And how with all, without all those small transitions, it truly does not look like a person. Uh, why am I mixing this color? Um, I wanted a warm color to put in the shadow. It has to be more chromatic though. Hmm. Uh, this I'm liking this really warm shadowy-ish color. It's providing chroma and life. This is exactly why I didn't want to add the black right away. Because I'm blending into it and creating this giant shadow that just does not exist. I need to get the white to come down a lot farther. Okay, so what I'm also missing. Oh, I probably should not have used that color. A bit more of a lower chroma color there for the cheek. Um, hmm, that's kind of not the right color either. I need a I need a more shadowy color, a darker color, if you will. Um, kind of just makes like a little bit of each color. No, but let's begin here since I already have the paint on here. This whole side of the face needs to be more in shadow because the cheek is very highlighty. I also do need to fix the cheek to make it actually more highlighty. Um, Uh, I do have a white brush still, or at least a light, or maybe not, that was just mixed out like a lot of color, <laughs> didn't realize it was in the middle of that brush, um, but getting a highlight 
and defining that there's, you know, a cheekbone here that is catching the light. The side of the head which catches the light. And then coming in here and smoothing out some of those highlights. And then coming back up here, lining this up because this is her head is tilted down, so the top of the head will be catching more of the light than the bottom of the head as the bottom of the head is shadowed by the actual head. Then, do I have that orange? Did I get rid of my, oh, I did, didn't I? Uh, but maybe not this, no I didn't, it's this one. Um, the eye socket comes and casts a small shadow right there. And oh, not right there, but farther over. Um, there, and then the highlight is right next to the eye. In here. As this part of the eye hits the highlight the most. Or the face. Then the light that's on at the bridge of the nose. This transitions out into whoa, not that, not that. Um, it's the lightest, but it doesn't remain super bright. But it is lighter than what I have. So I'm gonna bring that back. And then the lip of the nose, the lip of the nose, the lip of the lip. The, t the cupid's bow area, <laughs> or no, I guess not the cupid's bow, just the top lip is lighter, and then it goes darker under as I lost the shadow that the nose is casting down. It's not a super defined shadow because it's a very subtle, soft light. Um, I'm letting some of the skin color seep into the lips because William didn't make him super pink. They are rather catching the same light as the skin and staying skin color-y. Um, and then I don't really know what the shape is doing. Whoa. I just like close my eyes and I have the shadow of the highlights versus the shadow of the face. Which I lost the ability to see. <gasps> it's fine. All right, and then the edge of the chin is catching the light as well. I think I'm starting to stare at this for too long. This does not teeter, it does go over. Um, I almost want to get a little bit of that blue. I do have some cobalt on my palette. So I kind of want to grab a bit of the sky color. Even though I know it was made with ultramarine and not cobalt. Down here at least. 
I can at least get rid of the stray, ah! the stray brush strokes that had nothing to blend into. I can blend them a little bit. Same with the piers, getting a little out of control. Just cleaning up that edge. Making a really nice soft transition. What else is missing? The cheekbone is too low. Okay. This highlight goes down too far. This little black line is a little too dark. Okay, so that entire shadow shape is too similar in color. So I'm gonna try to go in and add some more of the variation that I see in the reference. This was probably a bad idea to do that light of a white. So we're gonna just simply mix that down. Because the value is roughly the same, but I'm trying to shift color and hue. Okay, color and hue are the same word. They refer to the same thing. Shift this just subtly up, blending the two together into a nice little transition. Ah, I'm kind of getting rid of the shadow. Just stop doing that. Okay. Getting there. What's different? Okay, the shadow of the neck. I have shifted it too far away from where it wants to be. This is not definitely going to be the right color at all. Eh, that's an okay brush. I'll take this one. This is going to be too dark. Oh no, my hand's not to be dark. Perfect to blend in. Um, oh, what am I doing? Ah! Okay, it doesn't want to do that. Yeah, this, mm, this brush, the one that has a little bit of the gray color rather than the pink. Get rid of that. <laughs> um, and then I need the orange highlight color. Which when I think about it, that might have just been the brush that I transformed into the shadow color. Get rid of the excess, grab some new, grab a little bit more yellow. Oh, the palette cam is just like dying today. I need to go lighter. But I want it to be very chromatic. I'm trying to make that orangey color again. I should have scrapped a new brush. Hmm. I almost do think this is the right color. It's just that the shadow is not the right color. Um, I just found the brush that I wanted. It's fine. Okay, we're gonna make that that. Wipe this off properly. Grab some more color for the shadow, which does want to be more chromatic. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of the orange. Uh, a bit dark. Grab some more black. Maybe don't need the 
together. Is that too dark? Okay, that's a little bit too much of a, a straight line. It does soften and turn up the jawline as it gets to the back. Okay, it needs to transition a little bit smoother up the back of the jawline. This is gonna be too dark. No, it's too light, okay. Should've just grabbed a new brush. I mean, I just grabbed a new brush. That is the brush I was using for the veil. Brush management, important. If I tell myself enough times, maybe I'll actually follow my own advice. Okay, I do want to go a little bit lighter. Okay, right now mine goes back and it needs to go up. What is happening with the colors around the mm, mouth? Because they're not right. I'm going to drop a little bit of this gray. Tab it more deliberately here. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That's not what's missing. I'm gonna drop instead some more warmth on the inner cheek. Oh, that was not the color I wanted. It's the color I was mixing into. I need more yellow, uh, white. Ooh, that is a lot. OK, 
Okay. Redefining this. It's feeling a bit cool. I know I used white. And it is very white. But I think it wanted to be a bit more of the yellow white instead. Yeah, except for up here. This does want to be white. I think the eye is too well defined. But this it's too big. Danger. to connect to the pupil and this line wants to connect to the eyelash so that's like way too dark What am I doing? Okay, okay. Looks a little rough, looks a little rough. Just you wait, just you wait. I'll bring it back, I'll bring it back. I don't feel about that. It's a bit better. I think the nose is too wide. Go back to the pink of the lips. Just bring it out just a tad more. Okay. Just got really. 
completely definitive with that dark. What is different? It looks like she's going more like this. Why does it look like she her head is back? Versus even. Hmm? It's like the clothing all over again. Just these little subtle things. This also has a, um, that, that shape I'm, I've made is not right anymore. Kind of comes in and out, not, not curved. It also curves down a little bit right at the end. Ooh, I don't know if that's right. This song is too hype, I need to think. Okay, seeing something. Right here. That highlight was too far down. I feel like my color mixing was perhaps a bit too simplistic. There's a lot more variations in color than I gave it credit for. But... I don't know if there's a but after that, I just... <laughs> a comment that it could be something like that. Making mental notes for future painting. Mm. Oh, there's something wrong with the nostril. I always get the nostril parts wrong. I always try to overemphasize it, and then they get underemphasized. And I'm missing. Oh, I'm also missing that entire like under shadow, the cast shadow of the nose. Which I'm putting in is kind of the more chromatic color. Also adding just a tiny, well, he didn't really do that. But just a hair of chroma on the edge as it turns the corner of the face. And then there's ever so subtly a shadow here. There's also a shadow here that I didn't really do. The end of the eye socket. And transition those two. And then it's ever so subtly, I guess, more of a shadow here to here. 
Oops. Um, grabbing a brush that I can blend those into the pink instead of blending more dark into the dark, into the light. Oh, it's 1216, I need to leave! Um... This might be dry for tomorrow. That I can do another little quick pass over it. And adjust. How does that feel? There's something still very off about this painting. And I'm not quite sure what it is. It's gonna be too dark. I can already feel it. Maybe not. This is such a abrupt transition between the two colors. Does that brush still exist? Yes. Make it a smoother transition. Keeping the value the same, just making it not so two-dimensional. And getting rid of this slight highlight or shadow right there. Is it because the shadow doesn't go up? Or I meant this, this, the, the light. These are really good questions to ask yourself when you're painting faces. Um, and to not give up too early. Uh, that's my best advice for learning how to paint faces. The half of this project is just learning how to, like the point of master copying um, faces is literally so that I can learn how to paint faces. Um, And even in the short time I've been doing this, not stopping too early is one really important um, aspect of it. And if you can spend a little bit more time on it, push just a little bit farther. Uh, but then there are times like the like Monday's live where it's it's never going to get better, and it's okay to stop. So the foundation's not there. It's really hard to get the next color layers on. Um, I've created a highlight there and I need to get rid of it. There's something about this final lower area that feels like it needs to be less pink and more white. Um, 
I do actually need to go. Uh, so I think I'm gonna stop in just a tiny little bit. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today. If you could like the stream and if you want to f subscribe, it's always appreciated and it helps a ton. Like a ton, a ton, actually. Liking really helps. Um, what else? Go check out my old videos. I have two videos out on my YouTube channel. And there's another one coming soon. There's something about that bounce light that I'm just not hitting. Tomorrow I will be continuing this painting. And perfection or not, it will be the last day I'm gonna do this painting. Which then kind of awkwardly leaves me for Friday not knowing what to do. But I was thinking of doing um, about the Portraits of a Saint series. Um, that I was, I have a few paintings that I wanna go and do a second pass on and edit. Um, I thought that could be kind of fun to do on stream. Today's post on Instagram is going to be about that. So go vote on the post and tell me if you want to see um, the Portraits of the Saint series. Or leave a comment here. Either way. I don't know. Just let me know. Um, hold on. That transition's a bit rough. Um, yeah, I'm kind of curious as to how better or you know the same i am at approaching the portraits of the saints after doing oh this is my night it's eight there nine ten eleven twelve this is like the 13th or 14th master copy um something like that maybe that's, it feels like there should be more um you know i'm kind of curious as how it goes and it does need to be fixed so I do want to go back and do it. It's Saint, Saint Dymphna was the one I was thinking of doing first. Ah! It's too dark. Um, so yeah, let me know. Um, there's like a slight shadow here. Wait, what was I seeing? Something about this. That it's not showing the lower eyelid versus the cheekbone. That perhaps it comes down a little bit farther, but not quite as white. So last time I brought it down farther, it looked really stupid. Yeah, keep that transition and that coloring very subtle. Hmm? Maybe? Also, there's actually... I don't want to do it because it looks weird. But there's a darkness here. <laughs> Every time I talk about there being a darkness, I feel like I'm talking about... Like I'm in Lord of the Rings. The darkness rises over... That's not even a quote.
Oh boy, I'm suddenly seeing a lot of things that I want to fix. Getting rid of some of the brush strokes down here. This lip shape is horrendously wrong. Alright. I think I'm calling it. The lips are wrong. The cheek is weird. What am I seeing differently about the actual chin? It does just curve. There's no, like, dimple in on the chin like there usually is, because it's a full half profile view. But somehow, it's like I'm not getting that curve right. I feel like I've overemphasized the eye. I don't even know anymore. All right, I said I was gonna be done. How much longer am I gonna continue? All right, I'm calling it a day. It is as far as it will get. It is time to move on. So tomorrow I'm gonna to finish the painting and I shall see you then. Thank you so much for joining. Um, tomorrow, 9 a.m. till noon central. Um, Roughly, or noon 30, who knows? <laughs> anyway, have a great day, everyone. Yay, bye!